G7, the Falmouth News Hub. BBC Radio Cornwall. Good afternoon, Cornwall. We're the Y7 News Hub in Falmouth, and you're joined by three young journalists today. I'm Josh West. I'm Zach Stajewski. And I'm Rosie Kersley Williamson. We have been keeping you updated on the latest across the G7 weekend, as many of our fellow young journalists have collected lots of brilliant interviews from across the last two days. June the 11th, 2021. Seven of the most important world leaders and their entourages descend on Cornwall. Along with them, the world's media, thousands of police officers and protesters of all kinds. Thirteen young and nosy Cornish journalists take to the streets, determined to sniff out a story. I want to be a sports journalist and when this came up you don't get a lot of opportunities down like especially in Cornwall so I was like you know what yeah this is going to be really good I'll do this so I did. Journalism is something that I really want to do when I'm older so I thought this would be a really good insight to what the world of journalism is like and also it's really nice to work with people who share the same interest as you. I applied for it to be really informative and to learn something and to like boost confidence so because I'm quite kind of get kept out of the way I don't really talk to people much so I kind of did it to boost my confidence and make new friends. Not, I have done journalism before but this is kind of a far more almost professional outlook on it and it's for such a massive event like the G7 yeah I just I just thought it was a great opportunity. I quite like creative writing and my teacher actually uh, recommended it to me she wanted me to have an experience with non-fiction writing because I love creative writing and I'm not so fond with non-fiction writing um, and also I'm, I'm a little bit interested in journalism so I thought it'd be a good experience. With exclusive access behind the scenes of the G7 summit from interviews with the Chief Constable of Devon and Cornwall Police to daily conversations with some of the world's top journalists the 13 secondary and sixth form students have been able to gain an impressive insight into the internationally significant event. It was the SES Pale Out protest that we did yesterday. The atmosphere was incredible and it, obviously nothing happens like this in Cornwall. So it was really amazing to see something like that. And yeah, that was definitely a standout moment for me. And then working on it when we got back, having Rosie and Jack um, edit it and then interviewing people on the beach as well mm. and seeing it all come together in the fi finished piece was really good. On the first day, the first people we interviewed, the clear seas people yeah. for making like washing machine filters for microplastic and they wanted us to do more for them even after this was over because of what we've done and how professional they actually thought we were. So they're happy for us to do maybe like a Twitter takeover or something. My favourite moments were like the radio bits yeah. and sort of like more of the spotlight stuff because even though like it's quite scary and like I may not be as confident in those areas, like it's what I've always wanted to do, like be in the spotlight and all that. So to have like those sort of dreams fulfilled to like even like this early of an age to like do that already was great. One moment that really sort of stands out to me is um when we were in the uh, uh, media centre yeah. and we spoke to um, Ed who works as a technician for Fox and I think it was so interesting hearing his stories because he's, he's kind of been everywhere yeah. and he's met so much, he's met I think six presidents, he met Nelson Mandela, wow. the Queen, he's, he's met everyone and I think it was <laughs> so and interesting. behind the scenes, behind the camera yeah, collecting the stories. So interesting to kind of learn about that life and how almost enriching it is. Hands down, uh, interviewing Sir Tim Rice. Ah! Definitely, <laughs> huge fan of his. That was incredible. And listening to the choristers sing um, and the people from all over the world singing his song, Sing to G7, was amazing. And Truro Cathedral is beautiful. So going there was definitely an incredible experience that I will not forget anytime soon. I'm trying, sort of, still thinking, I don't know which one is my favorite moment. I've had so many brilliant people I've met. I've met, um, um, or I had a surprise it from Kate Kennelly, the chief executive of Cornwall Council. Um, then um, when my favorite, I have to say, this is one of my favorite moments, when I was down at Gilly Beach for the paddle out protest, I met Ali from Seaspiracy, he, um, the director of this big Netflix um, documentary. And I was like, oh my gosh, and my English teacher's obsessed with him. So I had, <laughs> I had to get a selfie. Going beyond the security fences and lines of police, these young journalists have also sought to record protests, meet innovators, and business leaders and find out the views of locals and visitors continuing with their lives while the events of the weekend unfolded around them. Like I was worried that like uh, recently my confidence has been down on everything I'm doing and then coming here and realised oh you know what 
I can do these things. And I've just started feeling better about myself. I've been talking to people. I've, as well as all this, I've just been really enjoying what we've been doing. I've been having fun with it all. From this, I'm going to take away that I can just go up to people and talk to them and ask them questions and, you know, be a little bit intrusive so they will speak to me in a kind and friendly way. <laughs> but um, I, at the beginning, I was a little bit nervous. Oh, I don't really want to go speak to that person. You know, that they've got this big camera. I don't want to go see what they're up to. And then today, when we were down at the Media Hub, I was speaking to all of these people with these huge cameras, these big microphones, you know, waving them around in people's faces, asking for what they do, what they've got to do with this G7 and taking little secret interviews. And that I'm never too young to do anything and that even though you may have doubts in yourself and you may not be confident in who you are, other people will see that and they'll help you out and they'll, they'll give you opportunities to shine. Broadcasting across BBC radio stations nationally, on LBC, appearing in the national press and with coverage on BBC Spotlight, the successes of the group have been widely reported. If you haven't seen the orange t-shirts, you've missed out. If Joe Biden comes to talk to you, yep. what do you say to him? Marem first for once. Um, well, I would ask him uh, what he would, uh, how he would, uh, how he would support vaccines in sub-Saharan Africa because only two percent of um, Africans have been vaccinated against coronavirus. Something else that I found interesting was, although this year it's you know, women are greatly outnumbered in the G7. When I was speaking to people at school and trying to find out what my peers were thinking, it was actually the women that were more up to date with what was going on and actually had a lot more to say. You asked a guy what was going on, they're like, there's a group of seven people. Um, that's actually just made me think of something I saw yesterday at yeah. the Y7 side event. So there were a lot of young people there mm -hmm. and they were all taking turns to stand up and do a call to action to the world leaders. And they were invited to the stage and I think it was six of the boys got up and only one girl. Ah. And the organiser pointed this out and he was like, why have none of you girls stood up? And the next time he called for people, it was the reverse, it was almost all girls. <laughs> and so I think what that kind of says is that women do have something to say, but they're often scared to speak up. Not encouraged to yeah. be in that space, they wait for the invitation. Yeah. And once they have that invitation, they have the confidence, mm. but it's about maybe building that confidence in women so that we don't, we're not waiting for the invitation, yeah. we go and grab it ourselves. I didn't have that kind of confidence in myself and in my own ability. I didn't think that I'd be as good as everybody else. And I, I did imagine a bunch of guys who thought they were really clever <laughs> and was kind of dominate it. And I was really pleased to see, I mean, everybody here is lovely anyway, but I was really pleased to see how people leading it kind of evenly shared the opportunities and made sure that everybody did get an opportunity. So that was really cool and it felt really important as well because this is quite a major event and uh, previously, you know, throughout history, history has been told by the men, history has been told by men in power and I think that it's really important that when we have big events which will go down in history, you know, it might not be the biggest historical event ever but this is, this is fairly significant and I think that making sure women are now telling these stories as well is really important.